welcome if you're new via here be sure to click the subscribe button and also click the bell icon so that you'll be notified about videos uploaded from this channel the topic that we'll be discussing today daniel shot in the face by a female jdf soldier and she is seeking justice so let me just say this story was brought to my attention by one of my instagram followers daniel herself will be explaining the entire story to you but before we go down to that i just want to go now a quick round off on the story so basically daniel was shot in her face in 2015 by a female jdf soldier in downtown kingston however over the past six years she has been seeking justice and unfortunately not even a decent statement was taken from her no little compensation just not at all now just sit tight and listen carefully as daniel explain her story so hey guys good afternoon so my name is um danielle i'm actually the female who was shot by the female soldier um downtown six years ago on east green street yes and just to let you guys know i have not yet gone to the court or anything i've been getting the runaround since from lawyers jdf the police basically everyone i even wrote to the dpp but let me tell you how it all started so it was august 5th 2015 i went downtown to get a cake for my son first birthday well, I was actually, go actually going to Price Mart, but I had to meet my coach on East Green Street um, to take me to Price Mart. So, while I was walking, um, just before, I think about two whole sales before the mothers, I heard a gunshot. So, I was walking with my cousin, so I told her that, hey, gunshot that. I could beat it inside the mothers. Anyways, we are trying to run going there and me drop at the front because apparently at that time I was shot. So... I realized that I was on the ground and I was screaming and so I just pray. I prayed and I asked God not to let me die because you know I have to get back home because I want to see my son I want to be able to live to see my son so I basically prayed and God answered my prayer and so when I heard my cousin screaming I said girl I said girl why you cry and she said you get shot so I say me get shot all right then vital so you know quick thinking then uh, a security who was standing at the front handed me a purple kerchief and I put it on I was holding my ears because I thought the shot I had got, I felt the arm running from my ears so I thought that was where I really got the shot but anyways let me show you guys so I actually get shot under my eye and then it exit through my ears so um the ear the the i must congratulate the, the doctor at the hospital who stitched my ears it's not really visible but it was turning into all my facial bone was completely broken like i had to do therapy to get my mouth to open again if you realize one of my eyes is smaller than one that's the effect of the bullet cause it to swing and so forth and yes guys i feel pain in it up until now i have to take an eye drop like it is my food yes so this is it this is what i have to use and then i have some other ones that i use along with it this alone can cost you up to eight thousand dollars that's with an health card just to let you guys know so sorry about that so i actually cannot see well nor hear well on one side uh, but i have my glasses and stuff so you know that goes anyways so back to the story so in 2015 when i got i spent two days at kph first of all when i got the shot i got up and i helped myself i helped myself into a car until the police came and take us to the hospital another guy had gotten shot but and he died on my foot going to the hospital he was on one of my foot so he died while we were going to kph and when we got to kph i did not give a statement to the police until about august 25th the incident 20 days after and that is after i have written to um the, the the person the soic at central so um 
I think it was yeah August 11 I went to the public I went to Indicom my family it was a Tuesday morning my family took me to Indicom you know just to relate the story because since she's a serving member and whatever whatever um so when we went to Indicom now Indicom said they cannot do anything about it we need to go to the public defender went to the public defender and I gave my statement August 11 2015 they told me that they will contact me but I did not hear from them after trying to reach you know reach out back to them after um a little time they said I got a letter from the person who took the statement to say that his supervisor advised him to desist from going forward with the case so um, the alternative was um, to do a file a civil lawsuit against her yes because they are saying that she was on her um, she was not working but the person is a part of the intelligence unit you and I both know that intelligence unit doesn't wear uniform they're always working so basically that's just a cover-up um, first and foremost the, when I came out of the hospital and I went to um, when I went to Central Police Station, I was laying in the back of the car because at that time I couldn't sit up or anything. I had to lay down because I didn't have any balance um, or anything. So I had to lay down basically, and then my face was broken. My facial bones um, was broken, so I had to stay one place. Um, one of the police people went the car and say like my family got out my mother got out and say hey come about the incident that took place on wednesday because this was the friday and my daughter got shot and whatever whatever one of the police peep inside the car and he burst out the expletive and say i don't woman that my thing says she did and him walk away and Everybody was so upset over it that we just drive out to Central and go home. Anyways, after long after them come, them come at me and take the statement because like um, after writing to them and so forth, calling them, them finally come to the statement. When the police came, the investigating officer and two other police came there to take the statement. It was like I was on trial. They were telling me, well, the investigating officer was telling me what happened. Bear in mind, he wasn't there. So I'm saying, are you telling me or you're asking me? Because basically, it looked like I'm in a trial. At that time, I had I had gotten a lawyer to come to, to be in the presence while I was giving my statement. Because, to be honest, I never got unconscious. So I never forgot no um, As I tell you, I can tell you the story over and over like it was yesterday that's how I remember it so uh, when the liar the liar did dead and in the liar sitting said well we'll see you in court because how you behave you know is like I am not the victim so basically that happened there so that's 2015 fast forward to 2016 nothing I keep on a fear, call him, call him, call him, write a letter. I've written to the Prime Minister, I've written to the DPP, I've written to the Public Defender, I've written to Indicom, I've written to the Commissioner of Police. And it's basically, well, lawyers on top of lawyers. Every time I go on lawyer and them listen to the case, them tell me, say, um, I'm going to contact you and whatever, whatever. And them don't get back to me up until today. Or if you do go back to them then tell us um I don't think it's feasible. You know, something like that. So basically everybody just giving me the run around because I guess people are afraid of exposing the JDF. Well I've been in contact with several soldiers and you know some of them even advise me not to follow up with the case because due to the, the, the height of the heights of the corruption I um, what basically can happen is them can come <laughs> me and come <laughs> my family. Yeah, that's what they said, to be honest. Those were the exact words. Me have to be careful, me have to know what I'm doing. One of them even did tell me, say, um, you know, because me did go, JDF, go, go make a report, a formal report. And I spoke to a colonel, um, 
and somebody that know that I went there um, said to me that the colonel was asking uh, um, information you know um, basically they want to know my background so you want to know I am thinking you want to know if I have money or not or you know basically that so I just say that there is no justice in Jamaica for black for poor people the poorer class from your not up in society you don't have any stat um from your not up into society you will not get the justice you deserve you will be cheated on by the justice system there basically there will be no justice there for you so it's been six years i'm yet to see the door of the court sounds like joe but it's actually true i'm yet to see the door of the court i'm yet to see um i have not been contacted by the jdf since the incident i was the one who went there twice to be honest so basically lawyers don't want the case the the the, the justice the dpp is not doing anything um the police fail to carry out their job and it's just another citizen who has lost or been cheated on cheated on by the system yep so that's basically it six years no justice feel pain every day same way sometimes my eye hurt me run water you know as right now man i'm on three different eye drops these two plus this one and I that's just basically like my food I have to take um, pills for when I get off balance because as I tell you that my, sh my ear the shot went to my ears so that affect my balance things that I used to do I cannot really do them to the best of my ability anymore now viewers and subscribers it is so unfortunate that you live in your own country something just take as this can happen to you and no matter what you do no matter which end you turn no matter who you turn to you can't get no help and it's something that is haunting you up until six years after more often know who will be there to stand up for our people if we can't turn to no lawyer we can't turn to no police we can't turn to nobody for help what we are gonna do viewers and subscribers i would love to hear what are your thoughts on this story down in the comment section and remember everybody opinion valid so nobody afraid to leave on a thought down there we have made it to the end of our next video thank you guys for watching catch you guys next time i'm out and stay blessed and stay safe